Hello and welcome to Children's Chapel this July 26th, 2020. And I'm here to say it's a glorious day. It's Sunday, our day of rest, our Sabbath. And even though we're in a time when we're learning all sorts of things about new things we didn't know about that didn't exist before, like COVID-19, or learning at home, or working in tandem together with our parents as they work from home, or all sorts of new things that are happening. I want us to take a moment and just realize that this is the day that the Lord has made. And as the Sabbath, it's the day that Lord, the Lord has made for us, a day for us to come together and be thankful for all that is given. All right, so for those of you who are out there, I ask you to do one thing, which is to stand up, right? And let's just shake out some wiggles. Maybe we've been busy in our house. Let's shake those wiggles out, right? And then let's sing this song. I think most of us know it, that rejoices that this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Now, since we haven't been together for a while, you'll remember that when you heard me saying the same words twice, the second time through, when we're all together, you say them back to me like an echo. So I'll be like, this is the day. And then I hear, this is the day, right? So let's sing as much as we can with as much gratitude and happiness that we can so I can hear you even from here. So I'll say, remember, this is the day. And I hear you say that the Lord has made. So we start that part, right? This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So let's try that, all right? This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made made. All right, everyone. Thank you, Children's Chapel community, for singing with me. I could hear those echoes all across our town of Seattle, all across from the many places we might find ourselves this morning. I can imagine you and hear you in my heart singing with me and rejoicing in this day, this day that God has made for us, our Sabbath day. So now is the time in Children's Chapel when we listen to what God is saying to us through the Holy Bible, the scriptures. And we do that through, again, the gospel, which is the stories, right? The stories of Jesus's life and ministry. And we have how many gospels? We have four. So we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are the four gospel books, and they tell about Jesus's life. So today, our story is from the first one we mentioned today, Matthew, right? So what do we do when we hear that we are getting ready to hear the gospel in church? We say, the holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. All right. Now, this is kind of long, so I want you all to listen up, because Jesus is using the parables, right? The parables, which we talked about a couple of weeks ago, which are stories that liken a, one situation to something that people might understand a little bit better. So as we're listening to this long story, Jesus gives us a lot of examples. In this story, you will hear one, two, three, four, five, five different parables. So let's listen up when we hear what Jesus is telling us so that maybe we can understand a little better about what the kingdom of God is like. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, making a cross, according to Matthew. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. 
It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. So that's parable one. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. He then told another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened, right? So again, yeast, some of you might've seen that. Maybe your mom or grandma or dad or um, friend makes bread and you know that yeast is really, really tiny, just like a mustard seed, but it is what helps the dough to rise for bread. If you like bread, it's that yeast that you put in there that helps the whole loaf rise. So the first one was the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. And the second one is the kingdom of God is like yeast. The kingdom of heaven, Jesus continues, is like a treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. So number three, we had the kingdom of God mustard seed, the kingdom of God like yeast, the kingdom of God like a treasure that's hidden in a field. Again, Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. And on one, finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. So now we have mustard seed, yeast, treasure, and a pearl. Again, Jesus continues, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that is thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind when it was full. They drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from righteousness and throw them into the furnace of fire. So the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, yeast, treasure, what else? Net, pearl, right? And I got those out of, um, con uh, out of order from what Jesus said because first of all, Jesus said pearl and then net. But you, you understand, right? So those are five different examples, five different ways of explaining to folks what the kingdom of God is like. And as we talked about a couple weeks ago, again, parables are using things that people understand um, to tell them what God is like. So perhaps if you were a merchant, you would understand the idea of the pearl. Or if you're someone who is um, a landowner, you understand maybe keeping the treasure in one place. Or if you're um, someone who makes bread, you understand the yeast. So Jesus always tried to use examples of what God is like. At the end, he said to them, have you understood this? And they answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the, the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a household who brings out his, of his treasure what is new and what is old. So that sounds like a sixth one, doesn't it? Because the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. So you have six parables there. Um, so let's think a little bit about what Jesus is telling people in every case, right? Something small is used to change something large, right? And something um, that alone seems incomplete, when added in together in the kingdom of God, right? It becomes greater and greater and greater. And that's the way it is for us as Christians too. With a little bit of love in our hearts, with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we can change. We can change not just our life and maybe make our, our family and friends a little happier, but we have a, a, the ability to change our larger world as well, just from a little bit. Think how little the yeast is. Think how little the seed is. Think how little the pearl is. And how small in relationship to a big field 
that a treasure is. All of those things are ours, right? That um, our little bit that makes the difference in the world. So today, I give you this little task um, where you are, wherever you are. I want you to think of something that you could use to explain your experience of God's love or your experience of the kingdom of heaven. All right. So it could be something really fun. Like, for example, a lot of these um, these examples, people aren't going to understand if they have never been on a farm or if um, people know a lot. People put money in the bank now. They don't put it in a field. Right. So we as Christians are asked to help people understand what God's love and God's kingdom is like. Right. So perhaps we use words that we know, like Jesus is like ice cream the most delicious of desserts, something that always makes you happy, or Jesus is probably better than ice cream, right? But we say, maybe Jesus is as great and as good as ice cream, as delicious as ice cream. Or Jesus is um, as wonderful as my favorite um, game, right? So whatever it is that we know um, and that we love, we can use those as of examples, uh, those as, pardon me, examples when we think about um, how God acts in our lives, right? So what is it that you're going to think of? Is Jesus as cute or as wonderful or as forgiving or as loving as your dog, right? These are ways to help other people understand, and they're totally great. Those are called metaphors and similes because they help us to understand things using other words that we understand better, right? So what is Jesus like in your life? I hope you'll let me know, all right? Send in any ideas you have because they're wonderful and they're welcomed, all right? So now is the time when we are in our children's chapel going to pray. And remember what we do with our hands. Usually we have our hands out like this. Maybe you want to stand up when you pray. Or maybe you want to find a nice, comfortable way to sit so that you can close your eyes. Sometimes we close our eyes when we pray so that we can keep our attention inside, into our hearts and into our, our minds. So if we want to, we can close our eyes when we pray. And just think for a moment, what things you'd like to pray for today? Is there a family member, a friend that you want to lift up, give thanks for, or pray for? Is there something um, in your life or in your world that you want to ask Jesus for more knowledge about or to help you with? Just take a moment to think of those things. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this time together in Children's Chapel. We give you thanks for your love, for your light, for always teaching us in ways that we can understand. We ask that you be with us this day that you have given us and that you put into our hearts great joy and gladness for this life we have been given and an openness to learning the new lessons you are teaching us in this time. Help us to remember that just like you, we are called to help one another. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Amen, everyone. All right, so it's the time of Children's Chapel now where we sing our song, our favorite song. And, um, well, I don't know if it's our favorite song, but it's our goodbye song. So let's Go ahead and sing our song. Are you ready? Okay. Go now in peace. Go now in peace. May the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. Okay, one more time. Let's lose my voice there. Go now in peace. Go now in peace. May the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go.
Go now in peace. And I am glad that you're going to stay on this just for a minute and see which craft Miss Naomi is going to have you do. Take good care. Bye-bye. Hi, welcome back to Craft Time. I'm Naomi, and today's gospel reading was from Matthew chapter 13 from several different verses that I'll go ahead and list right here in our imaginary box again. So in case you want to go back and reread them, you can. The gospel reading had several different parables about what the kingdom of heaven was like, but I'm going to focus on the mustard seed parable. So we're going to be making a mustard tree. So I already started on this, but I'll show you what you need. I used a white piece of paper to do the craft on, but you can choose any color you like. And then I just glued on a tree trunk and I made it pretty simple. So if you want to draw the tree trunk with um, a marker, you can, or if you wanna cut it out, if you have brown paper, this is what you want to do. And then you're also going to need some green construction paper if you have that. Again, if you don't, then a green marker is totally fine. And some scissors, some glue or tape, and then a marker. And that's it. So, like I showed you earlier, we're gonna be making a mustard tree. So here's the beginnings of mine. And then I already started cutting out some of the leaves that we're gonna glue onto the tree. So here's some of my leaves. And if you've been watching my videos in the past, then you know that I like to speed up the process when we're making multiple shapes like this. So if you take your green sheet of paper, we're gonna fold it in half like that. And then fold it in half one more time and then I'll show you the kinds of shapes that we'll be cutting out for the leaves. So my leaves, and you totally do not have to do the same shape if you don't want to. This is just the kind of leaves that I liked making. So this is the kind of shape that I usually cut out for leaves. And you're just gonna keep it folded and cut out those leaves. And the awesome thing is when you folded your paper like this, when you cut out the leaves, you'll get four of them. So see how fast that was? Okay, so I'm gonna cut out the other one that I did. So you can cut out as many leaves as you want to. If you want a really full tree, then go ahead and cut out a lot of leaves. If you don't want as many leaves on the tree, that's okay too, whatever you want to do. And again, if you don't have green construction paper, go ahead and just draw this on the paper, okay? So there's my other leaves, they're a little bit bigger. And then I'm just gonna take my glue, or if you have tape, you can use that too. This one's nice because it has a little um, a brush on it. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on there and then just stick it right on my picture like that. And I'm just gonna fill up the whole tree because I like a full tree. So let's do that together. Let's see how many I can stick on there. And the fun thing about this craft is that you don't have to be too precise. You can stick your leaves however you want them. You can make a really big tree by making the leaves, um, you know, really full. Or you can make a smaller tree. Whatever you want is totally fine. There's no right or wrong way to do this. So here I go. I think I cut out maybe 20 leaves. So we'll see how full we can get it. And again, you can use other shaped kind of leaves. It does not need to be this shape of leaf because trees really have all different kinds of leaves. Even the done here and then I'll show you what I'm going to write as part of this craft. This is kind of fun. Just sticking them wherever you want. Okay, let me do a couple more and then I think we have a fairly full tree. Okay, 
So here's what I have just with about 20 leaves. And of course you can add more to make it more full if you want to. You can add some birds into the tree that we read about in the parable too. And then I'm going to draw a little dot right next to the tree. Just like that. Can you see that? It's really small because that's actually how big a mustard seed is. It's tiny. So the kingdom of heaven is like this little seed. It starts off really small, but then it grows into something big and beautiful like this tree. And that's what the parable is about. So I hope you have fun making your tree. And if you want to write parable of the mustard seed, you can. I'm going to write mustard seed right here to remind us of how small it starts from and then an arrow to show that it becomes a mustard tree. So I hope you have fun making this. Thanks for joining.